The wishing garden was designed by my mother and she and my dad constructed and planted it. Children delighted to walk the circle three times while making a wish.
The soothing sounds of the fountain, which always bubbled out a waterfall during the shows, invited folks to sit and relax in the sunken garden. Herbert loved this spot and often gave workshops on poetry and the craft of writing here. After purchasing an enormous hand-carved chair, Herbert initiated the crowning of a king and queen at the conclusion of every show, especially holidays like Halloween and Valentine's Day.
In 1982, while working as a puppeteer at Whalum Park, I found the little map I drew of the toy cupboard theater. I returned to visit Herbert to see if his theater was still operating. He was recovering from serious cancer surgery and was thrilled to learn that I had become a puppeteer, which was inspired from my visit as a boy. My visit that day in May became a 13-year association with Herbert as his puppeteer apprentice and museum assistant and great friend. Right, as the character to tell. Um, he's probably one of the most interesting, fascinating, and intelligent person I've ever met. Um, he's just infinite, filled with knowledge about history and art and puppetry and everything. to see what it contains. Uh, it's really a trip into the past, and uh, it's really worth it with today as being so modernized that um, this would be a great place to visit. What is the matter? Oh, well, nothing. I would just like to say a word or two to my clerk right now, if only I could. My time grows short quickly. Well, and how did Tiny Tim behave? As good as gold. Somehow, he gets solemn and thoughtful sitting by himself so much. He told me he hoped people in church saw him because he's a cripple. And it might be nice on Christmas Day for them to remember who it was who made cripples walk and blind men see. Well, well, I think it's time to eat. Here's a toast to Christmas. Merry Christmas to us all, my dears, and God bless us. God bless us! <laughs> And a toast to Mr. Scrooge, too. Mr. Scrooge, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind. I'll tell him where to take it. Come back with a man and give you a shirt. Come back with a man in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. I'll send him to you to Bob Cratchit. He won't know who said it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Now I must be up and get dressed. I shall visit my nephew with very happy When people addressed him as same same, he held the human race to blame because he could not pronounce his name. So he turned with metronome and fight to glorify other forms of life. Be quiet, please. For here begins his salute to feathers, furs, and fins. The lion is the king of the beasts. 
and husband of the lioness, gazelles and things on which he feeds, dress him as your highness. There are those who admire that roar of his in the African jungles and belts, but I think wherever a lion is, I'd rather be somewhere else. <laughs> Just close friends of Herbert were ever allowed into certain rooms of his home, only because there was very little room to move around in them. Doll houses and miniature treasures filled every flat surface in every room. His dining room table was covered, chairs were piled high with books, shelves contained valuable ceramics and porcelain. Even the antique tables and desks in his living room were stacked high with his tiny treasures. During the late 1980s and early 1990s, Herbert suffered from hip pain and found it difficult to climb stairs. Much of his collection began to fill the first floor of his home, which allowed him the joy of viewing and working on his projects. In November of 1995, a week before Thanksgiving, Herbert became very ill. It was necessary for him to be taken to the hospital. Sadly, he never returned to his home. He silently and peacefully left us a week later on Thanksgiving morning. After a total liquidation of the contents of the museums, puppet theater, and personal furniture, antiques, portraits and dollhouses, and the property was eventually sold.
Although Herbert's wish was to continue the operation of his puppet theater and museums, it never came to pass. Other people had different plans put in place even while Herbert was still living. Very little remains on the site where thousands of families found such happiness. The puppet theater building has been dismantled and removed. The house suffered a serious fire and has since been totally renovated. The very old wooden picket fence which surrounded the property has deteriorated away. The only thing which still remains at this present time is the John Green Chandler Museum building. However, it stands in a very sad state of neglect. I often think back to this period of time in my life and cherish each and every memory I have of Herbert and the Toy Cupboard Theater and Museums. Through these years since his passing, I thank him daily for the many gifts he left me, none of which were in material form, but so much more valuable. Herbert gave me the answer to the most important question in life. Why do we exist? What is the meaning of our lives? He didn't exactly tell me the answer. He showed me. Through his kindness, his humor, his compassion for all, including animals and nature's beauty, he shared his vast knowledge openly with anyone who asked. But mostly, he proved to me that happiness in life is not taking, but giving. He taught me to share my talents with others, to bring creativity and enlighten young minds, to inspire, to educate, and to always learn what is right and true. Most importantly, Herbert shared his laughter and joy with everyone. Please remember Herbert Henry Hosmer, Jr. You would have loved him, too.